Well, Jay Sekulow of the American Center has helped to do a moot court with the uh, essential opponents of this law. And Jay, uh, you heard the arguments. How's it coming out, do you think? I think it was a good day for those of us that were challenging the law for us. That's representing 119 members of Congress, because on uh, when it got to the individual mandate, Pat, on uh, Tuesday, it was strikingly clear that a majority of the justices, at least in the oral arguments, you got to be careful to judge a case by oral arguments, but clearly the oral arguments went in favor of Paul Clement and also Mike Carvin, who were arguing that the law violated the Commerce Clause. Justice Kennedy said that the law represented a significant shift in the relationship between government and its citizens, and also said the government had a heavy burden to justify such a sweeping uh, mandate. So the, the oral arguments went great. And then even yesterday, when it came to the severability issue, that is, if you uh, declare that the mandate is unconstitutional, what do you do with the rest of the law? There looked like there was five votes for that whole law to go. Uh, so I, I'm encouraged because a lot of people thought coming into this, we had the, the more difficult of the challenge. Uh, there's always deference to Congress, which, of course, the court does recognize. But the court has struck laws as unconstitutional on the basis of no Commerce Clause authority. That is, And that's the fundamental issue here, Pat, is does hmm. Congress have the authority to do what they did, which is take over 20 percent of our economy? Well, back in the 30s, they stretched the Commerce Clause to a breaking point, and yet uh, uh, the government got away with it. I mean, telling people how much wheat they could grow yep. on their own little private plots of land and so forth. I mean, it was kind of outrageous, but they, they, they did it. And so they were facing stare decisis on this one, and they will have to go against that, won't they? Well, no, I think they could make a distinction. As you can tell, we did participate in those mood courts. We're ready with the distinctions. But the distinction being this, Pat, when it comes to the wheat case, the Wickard case, that's what it was involving, it was the question of limitations upon how much wheat you could grow even for your own consumption. But in this case, uh, health care mandates are the cost of citizenship. Uh, you're not getting something for this. You're being paid, a, they, some call it a tax, some call it a penalty. Uh, to, you're required as being a citizen of the United States to do this, and the government has never been in a position where it's compelled you to enter commerce, which is what it's doing here. So again, the court voted yesterday, Wednesday's when they vote, but it'll be probably two and a half, three months until we get the opinion. Well, there's no way a court would rewrite a law. So as clearly as we, we can't do that. So if the guts of it right. go, uh, there's really nothing left. So the, they could nullify that. There's no severability clause in that law, was it? No, fascinating. Uh, in the House version, there was a severability clause, but then that was removed, and it was never passed with the se uh, severability clause put in place. And Justice Scalia did make the point, and I think, Pat, you're, you're right on here, and that is, this is a 2,700-page bill. We're taking out the guts of it with the individual mandate. How is the court going to determine what stays and what goes and how it should be? They're going to throw it back to Congress and say, basically, try again. And I suspect with this Congress, uh, Obamacare, as we know it, does not pass. I think there'll be other alternatives that'll be put forward. Of course, we're in, uh, engaging in an election year. But at the end of the day, you're absolutely correct. Uh, Justice Ginsburg desperately tried to say, look, we could still save portions of the law. But it was clear that Justice Kennedy, who's considered the swing vote here, was not inclined to do that. Again, you've got to be careful in judging with the oral arguments. But uh, the oral arguments clearly went our way. The advocates did a fantastic job. And the government had a rough time. I mean, uh, one of the legal commentator said they had a train wreck on Tuesday and a plane wreck on Wednesday. So this is uh, clearly uh, was a very difficult uh, time for the Department of Justice and the Solicitor General. Politically, Jay, uh, I know James Carville is already starting to spin uh, in favor of Obama. Yeah. He said, well, if it goes down, it'll be good for Obama because he'll be free from this. And uh, it, it, it could reverse. But is this going to be a major disaster for the president? This is the, the, the uh, well, the linchpin of his entire uh, the signature uh, bill. Yeah, signature. Yeah. Yeah, Pat, this is, the, this is the signature bill. I mean, this is, if, if you think about what legislative accomplishment has President Obama done in his first three and almost half years of presidency, well, it's the health care bill, and that is now the law. Well, if that is declared unconstitutional, think for a moment, what other legislative accomplishments have there been? And the answer is none. Uh, and the reality, I think, will be, 
that this will still be a huge political issue. Uh, the president will say, look, you got to get me more Democrats in the Senate so I can get Democratic appointments to the Supreme Court of the United States. Uh, the Republicans are going to say, hey, wait a minute, this looks, uh, <laughs> you got to be kidding me. If we, we're going to give the guy another chance to do this. We can't do that. We got to have a Republican in the White House. We need uh, more conservative justices on the Supreme Court. So I think it clearly is going to play as a major political issue. Uh, it just may be that the Republican doesn't have to uh, vow. They could vow to remove it, but they may not be having to actually exercise that uh, uh, capability. It may remove itself via the Supreme Court. Uh, Jay, uh, procedurally, uh, I understand the justices are going yeah. to vote on this thing uh, tomorrow. But yet they'll write this, this opinions, and they can go back and forth horse trading it. But then they'll come out with the right. final opinion in June. Is is that the way it works? They vote tomorrow. Yeah, well, either they either voted yesterday afternoon or they vote uh, tomorrow. But typically, they vote uh, Wednesday is the voting day. And in a case like this where you had, even though this was three arguments, it was one case. So I, probably the vote was uh, Wednesday. Could have been Friday. But it certainly is this week. They will then, the majority, whoever's in the majority, the senior most justice. So if it's a, if it's a situation where the uh, conservatives are in the majority and John Roberts with that group, he would determine who writes the opinion the same uh, if it was uh, for the liberal members of the court, if they were in the majority, the most senior would determine who writes the opinion. So uh, it'll be fascinating to see because it's going to be, it is the opinion of the decade, probably in the last 20 years. Uh, this one has dwarfed a lot of cases, especially when it comes to government regulation of individual citizens' lives. And as I said, Justice Kennedy said it exactly correct when he made the statement, and I think perfectly so, that this significantly reshaped the relationship between government and its citizens. I think that was a telltale sign. Jay, thanks so much, and thank you for the work you're doing. God bless you. Thanks, Pat.